In this video I'm going to show you how you can make your own rainbow bunting. Beautiful for the garden or for decoration in your home. Hello my name is Karen Stangroom and welcome to Conquer Crochet, the channel for tips, tricks and techniques for conquering your crochet. Everything I talk about in today's video will be linked in the descriptions below. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss a single stitch. So if you're keen to get going with this video, give me a thumbs up and let's do this. So for this tutorial, you're going to need uh, some yarn. I'm using Patterns 100% Cotton DK Double Knit. Uh, I'm using a 4mm crochet hook. I have scissors to cut off my ends, my needle to sew in my ends. And also if you want to use a stitch counter, I'm actually going to use my stitch counter to count my rows. Equally you could use a piece of paper and just mark off the rows as you complete them. So I've decided to make my bunting as a rainbow. So I've got my first five rainbow colours that I'm going to use. I just need to make the purple at the end. I'm also going to use a white as my tie, as my ribbon across the top of the bunting. To link it all together so I've got some way of hanging up my bunting. So we'll come to that at the end of the video. So we're going to start off with whatever colour you want to do. You don't have to do rainbow, you could do them all in one colour, you could do alternate colours, just pick some colours that you actually like. Um, these look really nice if you want to hang them up for a party. You can hang them up in your garden in the summer when it's nice. Um, because I'm using cotton they should wash pretty well. Uh, what I would suggest you do is to hand wash them, reshape them when they're wet and maybe put something heavy on them just to keep them nice and flat to stop them curling. You can see this one's curling already. Uh, what I'm intending to do is to spray starch them before I hang them up or before I do the, um, the ribbon across the top. That way then they should keep their shape and they won't curl when they're actually hanging up because if if I've got the ribbon at the top here and this starts to curl that's not going to look great. So that's my plan is to spray starch them. Equally if you wanted to you could use PVA glue and a little bit of water mixed in and you can paint that on let it dry and that really stiffens it up. It depends what sort of look you want. If you want it to be rigid or you want it to blow about in the wind it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to take my 4mm hook and my yarn and I'm going to make a slip knot. You can do this in whichever way you prefer. And I'm going to chain two. We're then going to work two double crochets, that's UK terminology. That would be uh, single crochets in US terminology. So we're going to make two double crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we don't count the one on the hook. We go one, two, and it's that first chain that we made. So we're going to go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two on our hook, into the same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the two on our hook. And we can tighten up our slip knot now just to make sure that, that works. And how we start our triangle, we work from the bottom and we build up our rows. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work over. We're now going to do two double crochets in each of the stitches. So if we've got two stitches. We have this one and this one. This is our turning chain. So we're going to do two double crochets in the first stitch, two double crochets in the next stitch. So we go one and two. And the second stitch, one and two. We chain one and we turn our work. So that was row three. Row four, we do two double crochets in that first stitch. So one and two and then one double crochet in the remaining stitches. So that's three, four and five. And that first two double crochets that we did in that first stitch is our increase. So we're increasing 
by one stitch in each row. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work, two double crochets in the first stitch, one and two, and then one double crochet in the remaining stitches. So three, four, five, and six. You can see already we're starting to get that triangle shape. Let's do another row. So chain one, turn your work, two double crochets in the first stitch, one and two, and then three, four, five, six, and seven. Now if you're wanting to do some small bunting, maybe to go into a, a doll's house or something small, you just wanted, you might want a little row of bunting to go on top of a cake. You could make these at any size you want, any time you want you can stop. Now you've got your triangle shape, you can make these as big or as small as you want to. And that would look quite nice on a cake if you had four or five different colours of bunting with a little stick holding them up, you join them all together and they could just hang as little bunting across the top of a cake as a decoration. Okay, so we're going to do our next row. So chain one and turn, two double crochets in the first stitch, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six. So continue going now until you have your bunting triangle as large as you like. So for every row you're going to chain one and turn and for every row you're going to do two double crochets in that first stitch and one double crochet in all the remaining stitches of that row. So pause the video now until you've completed all the rows that you need. So I've come to the end of my bunting. I've, including the two chains at the beginning, I've done 29 rows. Just need to turn that one round. So I'm now going to fasten off. And there is our lovely triangle for our bunting. All we need to do now is to weave in those ends. So that's just a case of going through one way and I'm going to go back the other way and you can do this three times for each stitch and very rarely will it come undone if you use the power of three Oops. There we go, straighten it out so it's not all bunched up. And then cut off our end. And we can do the same for the bottom as well. Make sure with the bottom one that you're doing it from the back, not the front. And from the front you'll notice that you can see both sides of the stitch. On the wrong side you can't see both sides of the stitch unless you turn it over. So that's the back. That's two. And then I'll just do a third one just to make sure. I know this is going to be a decoration but if it's going to be hanging up in a, a garden or a window or something, you might want to make sure that it's not going to unravel if it's blowing around in the wind. So there we have our final part of our rainbow. So what we're going to do next is to make our 
ribbon to go across the top and I'm going to be using a white cotton again this is patterns cotton I really like the sort of the sheen that you get on the cotton from patterns some cottons are quite dull this one has quite a nice sheen to it and just gives it a nice little feel but you can use any cottons that you want you can use any yarns that you want you could use a wool blend yarn if you wanted to if it was going to be in the house it's entirely up to you so I have my stack of bunting triangles just pop those to one side and I've decided I'm going to use white as my ribbon so I'm using a four millimeter hook again and we're going to start off by making a slip knot again make this in whichever way you prefer and we're going to chain 30 so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29 and 30. So this is going to be the chain that happens before the first triangle. Now if you think you might want a longer piece for tying up then obviously make your chain at the beginning longer, you can make it as long as you like. Uh, if you wanted to you could do um, a little loop so when you get to and I say 10 chains you could loop it together if you wanted something to hook it up with but we've got our oops, our 30 loops here and we're going to start with the wrong side facing us on our triangle so I just talked about the being able to see both parts of the stitch on the right side so this is the wrong side and instead of chaining we're going to double crochet so we're going to find our first stitch which is this one here I'm going to insert my hook and we're going to make a double crochet so I'm going to yarn over put it through the stitch and then pull through and that will be the same height as the chain because the rest of the stitch is within the actual triangle itself so then we're going to insert into the next stitch yarn over double crochet insert into the next stitch, yarn over, double crochet and we're going to do that all the way along just double crochet into the top of the triangle and obviously I'm doing a rainbow so I've started with the correct colour I wanted at the beginning so that's our red and I'm going to just double crochet all the way to the end Making sure I go into that last one there. So remember that's the reverse, so that's the correct size. So you get that nice little sort of V effect going on along the top. I'm going to then chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that will be the gap between the two triangles. If you want to make this gap bigger, feel free to make that bigger to say I've chained six but it's entirely up to you how many you want in between your triangles okay so I'm going to take my next colour that's the right side I want to go into the wrong side so I'm turning it over I'm going to find the first stitch which is this one here I'm going to insert my crochet hook yarn over, pull through and complete the double crochet by pulling through the two loops on the hook. Again we just crochet along with double crochet all the way along the top of the second colour. See my second colour is orange because I'm doing the rainbow colours. So I'm going to crochet all the way along the top of this one and then I'm going to chain six again. So let me just speed this up for you. So just coming up to the end of the orange, 
and as I did before I'm going to chain six in between on I caught the orange there there we are so I'm going to chain six in between one two three four five six I'm going to take my next triangle which is the yellow find the top find the first make sure it's I've got the wrong side facing me find the top and double crochet and we're going to do exactly the same double crochet all the way along the top chain six add the next color add the next color until we get to our last triangle and I will join you when we get to the end of our last triangle So I'm just coming up to the end of my last triangle. Now when we started, the very first chains we did, we chained 20. So we're going to chain 20 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then I'm going to chain one. That's going to be our turning chain. Now turning our work over, so we should have the right side facing us now. We're going to work back along that chain in double crochets. So not crocheting into the first chain because that was our turning chain. So the second chain along. So we're going to just double crochet in there and the next one and double crochet all the way back down that chain so we should have 20 double crochets by the time we get to the end don't forget if you did make a loop on the other end you want to make a loop on this end first as well I prefer not to have the loop because that way then I can tie it onto other things if I wanted to have poles or I can just tie it onto anything like my marquee if I'm out doing a craft fair so there's lots of things you can do or you can just use a safety pin to pin it up so I'm just coming down the chain now I hadn't blocked my work and you can see it's curling so I will definitely block my work after I finished making before I hang it up otherwise we're going to get that curling all the time and that's just not going to look very professional when we finished it so coming up to the end of that 20 row And then we're going to just carry on with our double crochets into the top of our triangles where we had the double crochets from the previous row. That makes it a little bit easier to crochet into because they're a little more solid than the chains are. Now if you wanted to have a bigger ribbon, rather than doing half trebles, I would do extra rows of double trebles just because it would make it sturdier, whereas the half trebles would be a little bit flimsier, so it gives it more stability if you're wanting to have a thicker ribbon. Let me just get to the end of this triangle. couple more stitches left to do there that's one and two okay so we are going to double crochet over this chain as well 
but make sure that your chain hasn't twisted too much so if it has twisted as you've been going along make sure it's nice and flat ready for you to crochet into otherwise you'll find it difficult to see which of the stitches and it won't look as neat so that's two three four five and then going into the next triangle so we're going to do that all the way along so we double crochet in the chains and then double crochet into the top of all of the triangles as we move along and I'll see you at the end of this chain here. So I've come to the end of my red and you can see that my chain from before is really twisted. So I need to make sure that that's not twisted anymore. So I need to flatten that out. And then we're going to chain so then we're going to double crochet down the chain Oops. until we get back to the beginning of the initial chain that we made. Okay, so there we have our last chain, double crocheted into, so I'm going to fasten off and cut off my ends. And then I just need to weave, oops, just need to weave in those ends using my needle. Again, probably best to do it three times just to make sure. What I'm going to do is pull both of those through the same weave. Give it a little wiggle. That's one. flattening it out each time just to make sure we don't end up with any lumps and bumps that we don't want because nobody wants lumps and bumps. And pull that last one through. Take our scissors take our scissors snip off those ends put them to one side and there we have our finished rainbow bunting I think the rainbow colours look really cute but equally we could have had just greens and blues together or we could have had purples and yellows together if you've got particular colour coordination you want in a room or in a, a garden. Something else you can do is to add uh, letters so you can crochet letters and sew those onto your bunting so that one was upside down. There we are. <laughs> so you could sew letters onto your bunting, you could sew little appliques onto your bunting and then you could have the different names going across your bunting. So I've got my letters here that I was using for something the other day and I think at the moment we're in lockdown 
so that seems quite appropriate to have the NHS on there. Don't forget you need to uh, block your work so you can either do that by pinning and spraying, you could do it by using starch, as I said at the start you could use PVA glue and water mixed together or you could do it with a steam iron. Um, I'll put a link in the descriptions below to how to do blocking where I blocked to granny squares but it's exactly the same for blocking any piece of work. I really hope you found today's tutorial useful. If there are any information that you need to find out about this video, have a look in the descriptions below where I post all the links to any freebies and other videos I think you might find useful. Don't forget, if you have enjoyed this video, to give me a thumbs up below. Don't forget also to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you've enjoyed it and you'd like to see more of my tutorial videos. There are two other videos on screen to help you on your crochet journey and I will see you over there. Thank you so much for joining me on this one and happy hooking!